How do you draw self-motivation and guidance when you are indecisive and unsure of your future? Ah. <laughs> that, my friend, has an answer that is both simple and terrifying. How do you draw self-motivation and guidance? If you think that your life is just for you and just your own, you are eating your own seed crop of future motivation. You will enjoy your life more in the short run, and then you will find yourself overcome with lethar lethargy and lassitude and enervation, and you'll just find your motiva motivation running out. We are not merely self-propelled vehicles in life. We need a larger purpose. We need our life to belong to something and someone other than merely ourselves. Because the only reason we have ourselves is because people had a larger purpose in the past. The only reason we have culture and, and freedom is because people bled and fought and argued and screamed and yelled and whispered and died for what we've got. So people lived a life larger than themselves in order to give us what we have and our opportunities now. And so if you take the life lived for a larger purpose and you collapse it down into just what you feel like doing, you're just going to run out of juice, man. The fuel is the larger purpose. That is the fuel. My life, you understand, is not my life. It's not my life alone. It's not my life alone. And you can say, well, that's selfless. You know, that's again, the virtue of selfishness, like Ayn Rand and so on. Well, Ayn Rand was depressed and on drugs for the last 40 years of her life. So not an argument, but it's a warning ab about that kind of thing. So my life is not fundamentally mine with regards to my public life. I mean, the private life, well, you know, what is my day? My day is, is you know, chatting with my wife and, and parenting and, and doing this show. I mean, I enjoy chatting with my wife. I like being a parent, but it's a lot of stuff that I do because I'm a parent. I mean, it's not like I'd be playing Monopoly otherwise, right? So you have to have something in your life that's bigger than you, that's deeper than you, that gives you a reason to be pointed in one direction rather than some other direction, to give you a way to organize your day. You've got to have something bigger than yourself. Now that you end up chasing your own tail and become exhausted. And I think that Dysthymia, depression begins to set in because simply pursuing your own pleasures, your own individual purpose, your own hedonistic purpose. And by hedonistic, I don't mean that you're, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll or overeating. I just mean, what do I feel like doing today? Screw that. What do I feel like doing today? Well, I, I feel like doing today is watching Spanish operas and eating bonbons while scratching Cheetos out of my belly button. Sometimes that's the way. <laughs> the way I love to spend the day. But the question is not, what do you want to do today? The question is, what does the world need you to do today? You say, oh, well, that makes me a slave to the world. And, hey, well, well, guess what, Buttercup? You only have freedom because other people were a slave to something more than their own preferences. In fact, you only have life because someone, i.e. your ancestors, back four billion years to the first single-celled organism that decided to shuck off the sea and crawl on the land. Okay, I know it's not single-celled. I know it wasn't four billion years ago. Sometimes the metaphors get a little, a little away. But you only have life because people had a larger vision than their own immediate pleasure, their own immediate preferences. So if you're excited because the new doom is coming out, but you're not saddling up and saddling up and sorting up metaphorically to go forth into the battle of good versus evil. Well, it's not going to give you purpose any more than fapping is going to give you offspring. You've got to have something bigger than yourself. My life does not belong to me. My life belongs to the world, to truth, to philosophy, to virtue, and to the necessity of ethics, to the necessity of courage. Yeah, it's a little annoying from, <laughs> from time to time. But if you're listening to this show, I don't just mean this show tonight, but if you're listening to this show as a whole, 
You have power. You have ability. You have strength. You have curiosity. You have wisdom. Which the world desperately needs. And without which the world will fall and fail to a struggle and demise that has never before been seen in human history. We are rolling towards a Grand Canyon of bodies. If you have the power to heal at a touch, you don't have to spend your entire day healing people. But you, if you have that incredible power, you don't wake up and say, well, what do I feel like doing today? Okay. But you have this power. And with great power comes great responsibility. If you have the ability to process philosophy and talk to people, you kind of have an obligation. And you can say, well, but that doesn't serve my immediate... I don't know. You know, you have the power to heal with a touch. I get it. You got to have some sleep. You got to scratch your ass from time to time. And you you might want to boil some pasta and eat. I get all of that and do that for sure. You don't be a slave to it. But there's a larger happiness than the moment that you need to hook into to maintain the arc of happiness in your life. And of course, people used to have it in the grand story of Christianity, right? But Christianity didn't have the science of brain and IQ differences, so Christianity rolled around the world imagining that giving people the Bible would make them Europeans. Didn't work. Didn't work. Unfortunately, did the opposite of working. So, yeah, sorry, you've got to find something bigger than yourself. You can say, well, that's slavery, but it releases you.